Okay. Staff, are you ready? We're going to start our first case. We're going to call us back to order. We're going to begin with case PRC 2014-00013, Zunai Residence. Commissioner, let me let me make one uh, suggestion. What we'd like to do is reorder the fifth item and move it up to the third. So we'll keep number one, as, as you just said, uh, but we'd like to keep them sequential. So we'd like to move the, the fifth one up to the third. So just want to make note of that. So we'll, just for clarification, we'll be doing the ready mix waiver before the subdivision and the subdivision improvement agreement. That is correct. Thank you. Any concerns with that from the commissioners? Okay, at this point, we're going to proceed then on PRC 2014-13, Zunai Residence. Staff? So thank you. This case was continued by the Planning Commission on their February 12th date. They continued action to April 9th. And so we were suggesting that the County Commissioners continue this case to May 5th. And then they wanted to be able to address some of the concerns that the citizens had provided. They were going to rework, probably, re excuse me, rework the site plan and look at meeting with them a little bit more. At this time, uh, commissioners, do you have any questions, concerns, or comments about uh, staff's recommendation to continue this? Okay. Move to continue to May 5th. Second. Uh, before I begin that, I would like to know, is there anybody in the audience or come for public comment on this particular uh, case to make sure that we get that information now in case they're not able to come back? Do we have anyone signed up for Zunai Residences to comment on that? We do not. We do not. Okay. I have a motion on the floor then and a second for us to continue the Zunai residences PRC 2014-13 until what date was that? May 5th. May 5th. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Okay. At this time we're going to call up RCU 2014-32 Clear Intentions Glass Recycling. Uh, staff, it's all yours. Thank you. This is the Clear Intentions Glass Recycling case. It's case number RCU 2014-32. This is a request for a conditional use permit to operate a glass recycling facility. Quick summary of the previous request. Case number 1999-2V was approved by the Board of Adjustment on February 4th of 1999, and that request was to allow the subject site to be accessed by a private drive. Here's the site and the surrounding area. It's located in the light blue. It's about halfway between Washington and Franklin, and you access it through 56th Avenue here. The immediate surrounding area contains only industrial zone districts with some industrial PUDs. Future land use map designates the site and surrounding area as industrial. The applicant proposes to operate a business that collects post-consumer and post-industrial glass from communities and processes them into a high-quality crushed glass that's called cullet. <coughs> the cullet would then be used in the manufacturing of fiberglass insulation as well as new glass bottles. The company would source approximately 80 percent of its glass from municipal recycling facilities. The remaining 20 percent of glass would be gathered directly by the applicant from companies in Colorado. This includes local cities, counties, and hauling recycling comp companies located in the area. In order to accept glass, it must have no more than 20 percent of other materials mixed with it, such as cans, paper, and plastic. Since the facility only accepts glass, nuisance conditions would be kept to a minimum. Once selected, the glass is sorted by color. Employees then manually go through the material to remove plastics, ceramics, and other debris. The glass then undergoes a preliminary crush. After that, machines that utilize a magnetizing process also remove small glass pieces that are not detected by the manual search. These pieces can include bottle caps, labels, and metals. The glass is crushed again to reach the proper size for the cullet. The material is then dried in a drying machine with temperatures at approximately 350 degrees. Main customers, again, for the cullet are manufacturers of bottles and fiberglass manufacturers. The glass delivered to the facility is first stockpiled outside, where it would then be transferred to the building to be processed on the processing and crushing line. The facility would be installed with dust collection mechanisms, devices to stop any nuisance conditions. Final products stored in silos for transport to in-use manufacturers. The glass line would be operated initially by three employees. It's expected there would be approximately five to ten truck deliveries of glass per week with about two trucks uh, shipping out cullet per week. And over time, as I hope, more staff would be added and the deliveries would increase as well. Per Section 410257, outdoor storage in an I-1 zone is limited to a maximum of 100 percent of the building area. The applicant's site plan shows compliance with this requirement. Storage height, storage height is limited to the height of the screen fence, which is eight feet. 
The existing building is 12,000 square feet, therefore a maximum of 12,000 square feet of outdoor storage is allowed. So that's what that regulation really means. The applicant will be required to submit an application for a change in use permit for their new use. This permit will require this middle of the new landscaping, parking, and screening plans that conform to the county's current requirements. Staffs receive comments from Colorado Department of Health stating the applicant's already registered with them. The applicant would be governed by Section 8 of the Colorado Department of Health regulations pertaining to solid waste sites and facilities. And then Section 8 specifically addresses material recovery facilities. It requires a variety of things like record keeping, reporting, registration, site requirements, and closure requirements. And they'd be required to follow all of those. One comment was received in support of the request. There were no opposition comments. The Planning Commission considered this case on February 12th. They recommended unanimous, appro recommended unanimous approval. The applicant informed the commission they are a startup company. She also stated the company would not accept single stream recycling, but only accept glass that it's separate from the other materials. And the applicant did not express any concerns with the staff report. Here's the aerial of the site. Again, the site's in the light blue. <coughs> They'll utilize this existing building that you can see. Again, to the west is Washington. Over here to the east is Franklin Street. Here's 56th, how you get to the site through Franklin, or I'm sorry, through Marion. Here's a closer view then showing the site. Here's the applicant's site plan that they've shown, basically showing some glass storage bunkers, their entrance that they access through the easement. Here's some pictures. This is looking east along 56, so it's looking this way on the street. That's a little better more on, uh, straight on view looking east on 56th. So there's west along 56th Avenue, the right of way, if you will, of west 56th. Here's the site over here. There's a better view of it. <coughs> and that's looking up their access easement into the property. <coughs> So it's staff's determination the proposed location is appropriate for this glass recycling facility. The operation of the facility would not be a detriment to the surrounding area or the county. Planning Commission and staff are recommending approval that includes eight findings, five conditions precedent, 13 conditions, and one note. That concludes the staff report. Commissioners, do you have any questions or comments? Yes. Commissioner Hansen. It's not immediately on the property, but um, well, let me ask you this question. First of all, what, um, what would be the landscaping requirements in this particular case? Because it talks about developing a landscaping <coughs> plan as part of their change in use permit. So what we want to make sure is that since it's, it's a new use, that it meets all the current requirements for the landscaping. And part of that is that we're requiring dedication of right away for 56th Avenue. So at some point, that road would hopefully be able, be able to go through. So we'd be requiring that they have their front edge landscaping. So in short, it's 10% of the site, and then they have um, some options that they can do along the frontage. The frontage on 56th Avenue. Right. So you'd have to dedicate some of that right away and then landscape 10%, probably right in front of the building. Something like that is what you're suggesting. Yeah. Um, because if you, if you, you know, the pictures that you show looking down 56th Avenue in both directions, <laughs> it doesn't appear that they're meeting our landscaping code currently either. Commissioner Hansen, um, that may be accurate. Uh, depending on the year those properties right. were developed and whether that. or not there was a change in use permit, they may be considered legal non-conforming or they may meet the landscaping requirements. We I, would have to research I, each I know, I understand property. that. And I expected that you probably would give that answer. I'm only saying this just to illustrate the point that I've illustrated before, and I'm not the only commissioners who has made this point, and that is, is that uh, just because it's industrial doesn't mean it has to look bad. Um, and so... You know, my concern is, is that whenever I see on one of these kinds of deals, um, uh, they have to submit a landscaping plan later. Um, I have concerns about approving a lot of these without knowing what it actually is going to specifically look bad, like. So my personal request would be that we have a discussion about that particular process, because I think we need to be approving landscaping plans at the same time. M maybe not specifics like what kind of tree and stuff like that, but but uh, some idea of what the landscaping is supposed to look like uh, when we approve these things and not just see what happens on down the road because, you know, it's hard for me to evaluate whether or not I want to allow the use if I don't know what it's going to look like. Did, uh, 
staff want to respond to that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the regulations are quite clear as to what those requirements are. We could have spelled those out a little bit better here in the report. We have no problem meeting uh, the board's request, um, but generally speaking, every site is required to have 10% landscaping. 75% of that landscaping is required to be living material. 25% may be non-living material, such as rock or mulch. 50% of that landscaping uh, ought to be along the right-of-way. Um, and then there's other buffer yard requirements depending on the adjacent uses. So for example, if there's a commercial use adjacent to an industrial use, uh, there is a requirement of 15 feet of landscaping along that buffer yard. In many cases, the 10% landscaping is actually exceeded because of the, because of the buffer yard requirement. Along the frontage itself, there's at least four different options uh, that applicants may choose from, uh, ranging from uh, five feet roughly to 20 or 25 feet, uh, depending on the needs of that particular site. Um, yes, we would be happy to comply with uh, any submittal requirements that the board may ask. If that's a detail that is requested, we'd be happy to require that of applicants to be submitted in the future. It's easy to say the landscaping requirements are very clear when we allow administrative relief. Because what could happen, as you well know, is, is that they might come in and say, we can't meet those requirements, and you grant them administrative relief, or someone in the staff grants them administrative relief. And at that point, it's not part of the public hearing, and it's not part of these documents, and we, we can't enforce it. So yes, I would like to see um, us to have more involvement as a board in what these properties look like before it goes to the staff and when we make these approvals. And I would request that we have a study session about that. At, at this time, I would ask that um, staff include this as a future item on the agenda for a study session to address landscaping policies. Uh, that includes both the content of the policy as well as the process uh, behind uh, the policy. Is that okay, uh, Mr. We'll, Leopold? Yeah, we'll make note of that and we'll, we'll schedule a study session for that in the near next couple of weeks. Thank you. And I've got uh, Commissioner Henry would like to make a statement or ask a question yeah. as First well. First of all, I, I support Commissioner Hansen's request. It's something that's bothered me for a very long time, so I appreciate him bringing that up, so thank you. And second of all, Chair, uh, before you give staff direction, you want to make sure that you have other commissioners that um, agree with the comment. Thank you. Anyone else, Ms. Pulaski? Or Commissioner Pulaski? At this time, I think uh, we all agree with, on the wanting to address the big picture here, uh, policy. Uh, as far as this particular case goes, before I hand it off to the applicant, do we have any other questions for the commission for staff? At this time, I would ask the applicant, please feel free to approach the podium, uh, give us your name, spell your last name, and let us know where you live, or uh, your address, sorry. <laughs> Sounds a little weird. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very He's much. getting a little personal. Um, my name is Brittany Evans. I am the founder and president of Clear Intentions. So my address is 3200 Brighton Boulevard, apartment 419, Denver, Colorado, 80216. Well, um, it, landscaping is actually a question that I had myself. So as we go through this, I do have some questions regarding <coughs> our permitting process and uh, where where we're going and where we're trying to go. Obviously, we're a young startup company, so we're doing the best that we can to do some really great things in Colorado. And uh, this has been a learning experience, to say the least, going through this permitting process. Um, the landscaping, I do want to understand a little bit. A lot of the precedent conditions that I was given um, have more so to do with the landlord and his property, it seems, than they do really my company. So I'm trying to understand and clarify each of them to the best of my capabilities and knowledge of understanding every single one. And landscaping is one of them. Um, I know that we do have, the property has been approved for the 10%. I believe, and this is something I'd like to confirm with the landlord, but we do have all of that uh, submitted to the county. What, when you're talking requirements, can you clarify a little bit to me what that means to you guys about being, you know, submitting and being more involved in it? Is it with this case in particular, or is it in general? I just want to understand. I, I, okay, this is uh, Steve Odorisio uh, on the record. What I was, I guess I'm trying to understand your question. 
What was that? The landscaping that you guys were talking about, when you're talking about submittal forms for it, what are you looking for exactly? And is it to our case, things that you want us to show you for landscaping? Okay, are you talking about the conversation we just had up yes. here? Yes, yes. I think what we're addressing is a bigger picture okay. policy issue uh, that was brought up by members of the commission here is that we're concerned, I think, and if I think my colleagues will correct me if I'm wrong, is that sometimes we kick the can down the road and defer some of these decisions that may, um, under the current policies of the current procedures, may not always be followed up, or in fact, there are instances where it's possible that what we think we're approving here could not uh, be fulfilled to the fullest extent based on procedure. Um, and the policy as it exists today, meaning if we thought that there would be certain landscaping uh, in the future for a particular plot, uh, and then later on find out that the landscaping requirements were reduced or uh, eliminated altogether because of um, some sort of procedural um, use of discretion, use of discretion down the road, I think that's what I interpreted. Uh, Commissioner Hansen, is that a fair? And that's, that's, that's a fair statement, and, and I want you to understand that my comments weren't specifically directed to your circumstance. Um, I have no reason to believe that you wouldn't, you know, landscape the, the site appropriately. My reaction was more one of when they showed the pictures looking down both sides of the street, which is really more your neighbors than you necessarily. There's no landscaping. How, yeah, that's my point. <laughs> we, we have more landscaping than any of our neighbors right. by a so, long shot. So I want you to understand that I that wasn't really a comment directed at your application so much as it was frustration with the surrounding community. And God. I don't know the circumstances by which that happened. You know, maybe they weren't required it. Maybe they were given an, an, an exception. I don't know. Um, and so um, I, I think that in this particular case, what you've been requested to do here is submit a plan to our staff, and then staff will uh, work with you to make sure that it fits the requirements of our current code, is that, right. if that's fair, Avell. That's correct. Um, and then, and then uh, so you would be asked to basically follow our code, which, as you pointed out, will make it look nicer than the rest of your neighbors. Um, and my goal would be so that everybody would, would look nice, but I, it, it's difficult to go back and make people do things when they've been there for years, you know, that's hard. Uh, and, and so really what it sounds like is that uh, you were just here for us to have a conversation a little bit about policy. And uh, if you could at this time, I would ask staff to show the picture of their landscaping. This is their easement area. You can see their driveway. So this is off-site, but they do have some landscaping in there, and there's a little bit along the frontage. And obviously with right-of-way uh, requirements, that it's going to have to come back a little bit onto the site. So um, although the plan obviously would be submitted later for a landscaping plan, what do you anticipate being the, mod the changes? There was one picture that was really good that actually showed uh, the differences looking east, looking west, and then looking at the property. That's looking west. That one. <laughs> Here was looking, uh, this is the yeah. easement area that they access, so this is off their property, but it is some landscaping there. Mm -hmm. That's all landscaped. That's all rail ties, bushes, um, grass. It's obviously winter time, so trees were in there as well, which I believe there were more trees, but they were also cut down because of all the power lines. And so Excel would not let trees <coughs> that were going to obviously get into the power lines, grow there. So um, that is all landscape though. Yeah, and that's offsite landscaping too, because if you can see on the, that's a, their easement is across this other parcel. They're, so that's all on this triangle piece I'm highlighting on the air photo. So here's all of their property. And so what, what, what do you anticipate, although we don't want to corner you just now, but what would you anticipate changes of landscaping need to be in the future? Well, in the future, there wouldn't really be any changes to this. But there would probably be some along the frontage here. Which would be on the other side of the fence here, closest to the lower left-hand corner of this picture, correct? Yeah, that's, yes, that's correct. Okay. So eventually when that road goes in, there would be landscaping and then the parking lot and building. Got it. Ms. Ms. Evans, do, do you have can I? Does that help clarify? I, um, well, actually, I I am not the best one to talk on this. Sure. Is it okay if I bring the landlord up so he can talk on it? Absolutely. Okay, one moment. <coughs> I can open it. 
Okay, if you could state your name, spell your last name for the record, and uh, give us your address. Yes, my name is Steve Anderson. I'm the owner of this property. Um, and I think there's been uh, some misinformation uh, about this. Um, when I built that building, I was required to do a great deal of landscaping. Uh, I was required to have a percentage of the land area uh, for my landscaping, a certain amount of trees. Um, you see that uh, this triangular portion where the road is, is an easement to that. Uh, that counts towards my landscaping. There's landscaping on the south side, there's landscaping on the west side, and there's landscaping all the way up uh, through the property. Uh, it's by far the most beautiful place in the area. And what we could do above and beyond that, I don't know, because we already uh, have a landscaping plan that was approved by Adams County, and we've taken care of that. So I think this is kind of a moot point. That, that, uh, staff, would you like to respond to that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have an approved landscape plan uh, that was submitted and approved in 2000. However, um, the applicant is changing the use on the property, which <coughs> would uh, cause a reevaluation of the landscaping at this site. Um, so what we would be doing is looking at uh, the required right-of-way dedication and making sure that street frontage meets the uh, minimum requirements of the landscaping requirements. So there is an approved plan. However, that plan would have to be updated. But let, me, let me ask a question. Commissioner Hansen. So on condition precedence number four is, is talking about the 30 feet of, of uh, right-of-way. And I understand that piece. That's, that's kind of a separate component about that. that that's already dedicated on okay. the south end of the property. And that's probably why it's a condition precedent here, but, but um, I want to deal with, I want to ask questions about both of these separately because they're kind of separate issues. Um, and Avell, you just kind of mixed them together. So my question is, have they, have they dedicated the right of way already? Uh, not according to our records. Uh, Chris, can you zoom in to this um, part of the property and we can show you what our uh, GIS information reflects and then if needed, the transportation department could comment. Okay. But basically, that green line that Chris is highlighting there yeah. uh, is within uh, the right-of-way area. Um, so if you look um, here a little further uh, east, you can see where that right-of-way match line would be, which is basically where their fence is. Um, let's see if we can go back here. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> I'm not really sure what happened there. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I, I hear what you're saying in terms of what our map shows, but it wouldn't be the first time that our map was wrong. Um, and so, you know, my, my, my question is, what is the legal documentation for, for uh, indicating, you know, right away? Is that part of the plat or what, it, what is that? So the mechanism would be a, a deed. So basically... So, so is, it, is it on the deed now, I guess is my question. Not that we're aware of and not that we can find. So, so, sir, you, you, you knew that you had to dedicate the right of way. Your opinion <laughs> is, is that you've already done that. Yes. Do you have documentation on to that effect as well? I am quite sure that I do. Okay. Yeah, and he said that the fence, the green line is the property boundary. That is not where the fence is. The fence is 30 feet right. Right. past. So we've already, in effect, done that. Yeah. At this point, it sounds like something that could be very easily uh, addressed, verified. <laughs> if there is an issue, it sounds like everyone's at least on the same page of what the outcome of this particular issue is. So let's go on to the next issue. Commissioner Hanson, what was that the was other the thing? Lands, the landscaping piece we were just continuing to talk about. But, but, um, but I, I was, I, you know, I find that. You know, it's interesting. I mean, I, I do actually concur. I mean, I, I don't know what it looks beyond the pictures, but my, my impression actually was that it actually does look better than the surrounding, you know, vicinity in comparison. And uh, you clearly had spent some time landscaping that, you know, and you had an upgraded, you know, a nicer, nicer uh, gate and some other things like that in comparison to some of your neighbors. And so um, my question is really, I suppose, one for staff is, is that based on the landscaping that they have here now with this plan that was submitted previously, does it meet current code? I'll be happy to look at that. It looks like the requirement at that time um, was 30% of the site was landscaped. Uh, however, looking at the image, that doesn't appear to be accurate. Um, 
uh, we would have to verify what's different between what's on the ground and what's on the paper copy. Well, but I, I'm not asking you to look. I really wasn't asking you to look at the site and determine that. It's kind of a hard thing to do just on a couple of pictures. But, but my, my question is, is that, okay. is that um, they met the code. What was the code at that time <clears throat> compared to what it is now? Is it different? Uh, yes, it is. What's the difference? Um, there are, um, actually the requirement is probably slightly less than it was in 2000. So, so if they met the requirement in 2000 and it's less, then why do we want them to submit a new plan that would be less? Because our requirements of the code require us to evaluate it in that manner. So, that, so what it sounds like is, it sounds like that we need to, every time the hood is up, we check out everything. And uh, at this point, it sounds like if the, they're going to verify compliance with the code as, as required. My, my concern is, is that, I mean, I just, if, if they met the code before and it was higher, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm okay with just taking out number three on the landscaping anyway, because it sounds like they're already meeting it. Although the only other concern that I have is with regard to screening, because I know that that's going to be an issue in terms of outside storage, right? Ms. Evans, if you want to continue, is there? Um, I you? just, we have document right here um, for attorney's title guarantee fund, and it is saying that there's a right of way granted May 17th of 1971. Um, so it is right here. I don't, we have, we have it. Thank you. So that will be an easy condition to meet, clearly. Uh, what specific, uh, do you have any specific requests regarding the conditions around landscaping? Uh, no. Um, not around landscaping. I mean, our, that was one of our questions as well, is that we've, the land has obviously been landscaped much more than anyone surrounding us, and we've taken very good care of it. I've put my, a lot of my own money into it, making sure that it is kept nice. So, uh, I mean, that was one of our questions for landscaping. And then one of our next questions also goes into uh, the drainage as well. And uh, we have had documentation we, that we submitted with the permit showing that the drainage was approved by an engineer and given to Adams County. And so we're just wondering why it's brought up again. <clears throat> Commissioner Henry. When was that done? The, when was what done? The engineering approval? Uh -huh. That was... Yes. It's, when, it's when I built the building. So uh, that and was... When, and before I got... Uh, uh, certificate of occupancy. Okay. 2005, the paperwork's 2005. right here. Correct. Okay. All right. That's pretty recent change. We just had a concern in case it was done like in the 70s. No, I, I understand, <laughs> which is why I made sure to bring as like much paperwork have changed, as possible. But no. <laughs> right. Yes, definitely, I understand. That's, that's number two. So we do have the paperwork for the, the right of way. We have the paperwork that we, and we did submit this all in our permit. Uh, so we, we do also have the uh, drainage that was approved, uh, that was submitted, and um, do you want to? You're on it. We're trying to be. We're trying to be. That's why I'm bringing it up. I just want to make sure, you know, we're, we're doing our best. W once again, I've got a condition number two. Looks like you're going to hit that one fairly quickly and easily. Are there any conditions that you have concerns with that you want to have modified or changed, or is there any issues that we have that to address in particular? I do ask, you know, being a startup, so we've been in this property for, we're now in our eighth month, and we have not been able to operate. We have not been making any revenue. And my biggest concern with these conditions are that we have submitted everything according to what we've been asked in our permit, and we are being asked to possibly be you know, making changes to our land, and we have no revenue coming in. And so I'm wondering if there is any way that we can start doing something so that if we do need to make changes, we obviously have money to make those changes. So it sounds like that some of these conditions precedent might slow you up, but if they're already completed, is, are there specific ones you have concerns about? Because right now it sounds like that the right-of-way has already been granted. The uh, the plan for landscaping, I would be willing to move it, if I could ask staff, would, if we wanted to move some of these items for, as a condition precedent down to a condition and allow them to start their business, uh, what kind of concerns or issues would that arise? What, what kind of 
what would the outcome be of that? Well, thank you. Um, so the first topic is the drainage. Uh, the engineering section of transportation has indicated they have not approved uh, the revised <laughs> drainage plan. So we would recommend that you do not remove that from uh, the conditions, whether those are conditions preceding or conditions. Greg Labrie would be happy to follow up on comments concerning that. In regard to the landscaping, I did some quick math in regard to the previous approval. Um, there was a 20% requirement. That requirement was satisfied on property that may or may not have been owned by the applicant at that time. Uh, today, that adjacent parcel is not owned by the applicant. Um, they put in about 11,000 square feet of landscaping. Under the current code, uh, that would be about uh, half that at 6,577. However, the placement of that would be different in that the landscaping would be required along the frontage of this particular parcel and not along an adjacent <coughs> parcel that is not owned uh, by the applicant but is merely used for an access easement. Um, so those are the differences in uh, what's going on here. And as such, um, we would continue to recommend that an updated plan be submitted. However, the board may uh, alter that as they see fit. So looking at the, the map, are you saying that the triangle where the, e where the access easement is, which is just below that 1825, correct? Correct. That's the parcel that has all the landscaping. At one time, it was part of this uh, parcel. Is that what you're saying? Uh, we're going to verify that right now. Okay. Um, I guess this question would be for Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, who owns that, that parcel that is being landscaped right now that's adjacent to your commercial property? Uh, the Denver Water Board. And who maintains that? I do. You and still have, maintain I it? I have an agreement with the Denver Water Board and an agreement when I built a building with Adams County <clears throat> that that counts towards my landscaping. And that's not the only landscaping. There's landscaping on the south, there's landscaping on the west, there's landscaping on the east. So that's a misstatement when he says that's the only landscaping. Um, so, okay. If you go back to the picture, um, I actually, I, I so behind the building, um, there's that long strip behind the building. Green kind That's of all landscape. On the, uh, no, I'm sorry, it's the. On the west side? The green looking. Is that the west side? Yes, west side. I believe so. West side. On the left. That entire strip right there is all landscaped. It does have trees in it. Um, it's irrigated. It is irrigated as well. My landscape crew that comes in and does all the snow removal mm -hmm. and weed whacking, all that great jazz, they, they were up there working on that as well as on the triangle easement property. Mr. Anderson, who, who owns that piece of property? Um, that ownership was in dispute. Mm -hmm. um, at one time, I thought I owned half of it and the other person owned half of it. And we came to an amicable agreement where he owns the property, but I maintain it. He, he uh, owns the fence and maintains it. <coughs> Let me give you a little background about that property. That strip and the strip to the south of that was once the right of way for the Denver Urban Railway. It's a hundred, my property is a hundred feet wide and 600 feet long. It's also on a hillside where there's an extreme slope from that truck yard down to my building, and I build a retaining wall 600 feet long around there to, in order to build a building. When I bought it, the par property was landlocked. It was a nationally known hobo camp. Uh, people had dumped asbestos, tires, pallets. It was really a no man's land. I bought it, cleaned it up. Uh, got a access easement from Denver Water Board. Originally, the, the property was valued at $13,000 and the taxes were three, $30 per year. I now pay $16,000 a year taxes. Um, after that, I, I built the building, cleaned it all up, and so forth. So it's really a, an oddball piece of property that I took and, and made something out of. And so a lot of the, the standard uh, formulas or ratios or something are really not ap applicable. Uh, and I worked with the county when I built the building to, uh, for instance, landscape the triangle and build my road there. 
to landscape the hillside, which was useless, to plant trees. And we spent a, a lot of time and effort to make a good property out of it. So your standard formulas and ratios are not necessarily uh, applicable to this property. And please know that we're working towards that. I think the board here is actually trying to figure that out right, right. now. Right. Um, and so we, there are times that sometimes properties that are, don't fit the, the real standard square or flat right. square. And so I think right now what we're looking at, and we appreciate both of you bringing this to our attention, um, I'm gonna ask staff to come up uh, with the recommendation because it sounds like the landscaping on the western strip is something that you're uh, taking um, responsibility for. You also take responsibility for the landscaping along the triangle. Most of the other landscaping I think that as according to what we're seeing here would be along that road once 50, uh, 56th Avenue is extended. Um, well, so I doubt if 56th Avenue will ever be extended because of the topography, but it may. Indeed, but in case it does in the future, that would yeah. be something. So uh, I would ask staff at this time, um, what, what is your recommendation on this? Because it, it, it clearly shows that the landscaping is tied to this building, whether the ownership is not, and it's for the benefit of this building. And so I would ask staff what their recommendations are on, on now that we have some more information on this. Uh, thank you. Um, first off, uh, we do not have a copy of an agreement with the adjacent property owner, um, so we do not um, fully understand the circumstances other than what's been explained verbally. Uh, we have not um, received any documentation or information related to that particular topic. Uh, we don't know how many trees or shrubs are in that particular area and whether or not that meets code or not, uh, so we would have to examine that. Um, certainly, as the condition reads today, it allows the applicant and the county to work together to continue the discussion. Um, today, unless the applicant has those agreements, we weren't able to um, provide a, a, an intelligent recommendation. Commissioner Hanson, did you have a question or a comment? A couple, uh, one question and maybe comment, but you said you had an agreement with the, you said at one point uh, a few minutes ago that you had an agreement with the county that said that this triangle and maybe the western part you know, counted towards landscaping on this site. Yes. When you said you had an agreement, is that a verbal agreement? Is it a written agreement? Written what is agreement. It? Do you have a copy of that with you? Not with me, of course. No, I didn't know I was going to get in this discussion. Do we have a copy of that agreement? We have a copy of the agreement between Denver Water Board, uh, which allows landscaping within a certain distance of the water line, but it doesn't specify anything else. The uh, landscaping that's on the western boundary is not depicted in the approved landscape plan. Which, which one, the original one, you mean? Yes. But the, for the, the triangle is depicted in the landscaping plan? The triangle the is depicted, yes. Okay. I, I mean, I'll tell you what my concern is, is that my concern is, is that, you know, we've got somebody that's trying to open a new business here, and um, this is for someone months. who, um, you know, clearly, you know, has run into a fair amount of bureaucratic red tape. Uh, on our particular end, um, it appears that there are some issues um, where I don't think we're being uh, as customer service oriented with these folks as we should be, frankly. Um, and, and, I, and I'm concerned about throwing up a bunch of uh, hurdles that are going to keep these folks from opening their, you know, provide you know, not a lot of jobs, but at least three, according to what they, they said here. And frankly, recycling is a good service anyway, because that keeps these things out of the landfill. Um, and, and I want to make sure that we can get these, this business open. One of the, I would ask staff, if we were to move condition precedent down, number three, down to a condition, and I think I finally get the, uh, on this particular case, why it is that you said, let us work with us on this issue because you can probably work on this issue with the uh, applicant because there are some details here that don't fit the norm. And what this would do is it would allow you to allow them to start the business. It's clearly that the spirit of landscaping is being met by this uh, piece of property. And then if there's a problem that you guys run into, uh, would that cause a problem? I mean, if there's a, what kind of problem would you foresee us moving this as a condition proceeding down to a condition, allowing them to go ahead and start business? Um, Mr. Chairman, the way the condition is currently written, uh, it wouldn't make a difference if it was a condition proceeding or a condition because it reads that prior to or with any building permits, the applicant shall submit and have approved a landscape screening and parking plan consistent with the regulations of Adams County. Um, and that's a standard protocol for the issuance of any building permit. 
Um, we do allow for certain uh, creativity to allow if there are delays beyond expectations for reasonable uh, causes, which would allow the applicant to submit a bond uh, while we work through these particular issues. But any required landscaping at the end of that discussion period would have to be installed by October 31st of this year. Are there any other comments from the applicant or the landlord at this time? Well, my uh, comment is the one that Mr. Hansen made. They've been trying to open their business for over eight months, and every time they do things that the county wants, they send them more requirements. Just yesterday at 11 o'clock in the morning, they sent another <coughs> list of things they wanted, and I'm just wondering when this is going to end and they can start and open their business. Ms. Evans, what were the requirements that you received yesterday that you did not have before? Um, so there's been, you know, some confusion and not very uh, detailed answers that we have been trying to understand from the very beginning when we were looking at this property having to do with permits and different things required. So um, in the beginning we were told this is this permit, the conditional use permit was needed. There was a lot of confusion whether or not it was needed because glass processing was is an approved use of land of our building. And so technically that is what we are. We are a glass processor. But because we take in glass from bars and restaurants, um, we were compared to a, to a landfill. So. And so we went through it, and then um, we were also told, kind of going through it, well, you might need, you know, this permit, you know, three other permits, this permit. It was, it was never very clear. And so we have been given the conditions. Now, I did speak with Chris LaRue this morning, and um, he did send me information that for some reason did not get to us, and we were not... We did not have a discussion about it until yesterday when he called about the different conditions that we were required to meet before we could go for a building permit as well as a change in use permit. Um, I did, I'm not fully still in, I don't completely understand whether or not we do need a building permit and a change in use permit. I'm a little, I feel like those answers have been vaguely explained as in why we have to get two additional permits on top of this one. We've asked about building permits and we're not building any new building structures and from what we understand the requirements of the size, if you have any st structures that are bigger than a certain size, I mean we are building a silo for storage but that is not a building and it would be removed when we would move. And so we are now being told that we need to go through uh, after this permit that we also need to go through a building permit as well as a change in use permit and we can only do those things and after we are doing the conditions that we are discussing right now precedent to applying for that so that was the detailed information that was given to me as of yesterday to my knowledge to my knowledge Commissioner Henry first of all I apologize um, I think I met you when you were just starting <laughs> Yes. So I really apologize um, for the length of time and basically the hassles that you've had to go through with, with our process. Um, I really appreciate your input that you just gave us because the only way we can learn about how to better serve um, our businesses is by actually hearing from them. And what I would like to do is I would like to ask our county manager to actually set up a meeting with you to have that conversation so we can start addressing these issues that we've been having for a very long time in Adams County. I always hope that things are getting better because, you know, I was elected two years ago and you're always like, I know they got to be getting better. But sometimes, you know, reality is reality. So I really appreciate that. And I would like, you know, um, after, you know, today our county manager to meet with you and have that discussion with you on what you went through, and maybe we can get more clarity on exactly what is needed. But let's just focus on this, and let's get through this. And I would really would like to make a motion right I, now, I, if it's possible. What, what, what I'd like to do is ask, okay, we've got only five conditions of precedent. Um, and so I think I understand where you're going with the motion, but I want to make sure that 
if we were to move that's that if we were to approve these conditions precedent that we're not still hampering her ability to get to business quickly so let's go condition precedent number one I'm going to ask staff um, and I'm going to ask the applicant are there any concerns about condition precedent number one this is the performance bond do you have any concerns about that is that something that you think you can get well that can be done but I question the need for it if anybody would want a performance bond, it would be me, and I don't. I don't know why the county wants one. Staff, at this time, could you please address condition number one? Talk about the uh, why it's necessary and um, what kind of delay it would or would not take. Uh, the first reason, it is a requirement of our performance standard for a recycling facility. The reason it's a requirement is because uh, the county has had experiences where recycling facilities have gathered uh, material and abandoned the site, uh, at which time the county has used its resources to remove those materials to haul them off to the dump. At this time, I'm going to uh, think that, as far as I go, as far as I'm concerned, I think condition precedent number one makes sense. It's for, uh, based on uh, what I see as a reasonable safeguard for the community. Let's go to condition precedent number two. This is regarding the drainage uh, study. Uh, did we say you already had that uh, completed? Yes. And so here's, a, here's a letter from a licensed engineer that says the drainage meets all Adams County requirements. Okay. Now I'm going to ask staff. Staff, uh, does condition precedent number two with that letter and the study from 2005, uh, will that meet condition precedent number two? No. The, Why is that? The engineering section of transportation has indicated uh, that they have to verify the engineer's information and that they also want an accompanying site plan that shows those improvements. And how long will that take for us to accomplish that? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, as soon as that information is submitted to the engineering section, that can occur very quickly. It sounds like it could be submitted like by hand today at this moment, correct? I, I don't know if they have a prepared exhibit or not. It sounds like uh, the... Yes, I have a follow-up question from Commissioner Hansen. Uh, well, you said you have the drainage study. You're saying you gave that to our staff. Right, yes. and here's a copy of the drainage study. Okay, so, so with I'm, a letter from the engineer that says that. Yeah, yeah but sorry, my question is, well, you might have a copy of that. My question is, did they send that to them too? Yes. And do you have documentation that shows that we sent you sent it to them? It is in our permit. Yes. So in our permit, right so here. So why, why, why? How come we didn't review it, or did we not review it? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the um, drainage plan that was prepared for this site probably around 2000. Um, they said 2005. 2005 was not constructed in accordance with the plans of the property. As such, the engineering section requested an updated plan to show conformance uh, to the drainage standards and not causing damage. What to you're saying is, is that there was. What you're saying was what was built. When was when was it built? May I, <clears throat> may I read from the engineer's letter? No, no, I just want to know, I, I, if, if we could just answer the questions that I'm asking and I'll, and I'll get to where you want to go. Uh, my question is, when was this structure built? Uh, 2004, 2005. 2004, 2005. <clears throat> and the drainage study was done in 2005. And I think what our staff is saying is, is that, that what was built was not in conformance with the study. I think that's what I heard you say. Is that is that a right, Avell? That's correct. So I want to hear testimony from our staff saying what was not, what was, not, right. what was, what's wrong with it. Uh, Mr. Labrie would be happy to talk about that. Okay, thanks. thank you. If we could ask the applicant and uh, Mr. And uh, Miss Evans and Mr. Anderson, just have a seat for a minute. We're going to have uh, another member of staff be able to address this issue. Thank you. Just uh, just temporarily, we're going to continue going down that list. Good morning, uh, Greg Labrie. Uh, uh, transportation engineering 4430 Adams County uh, Parkway uh, essentially what's what was happening here is what was built or whatever was designed back in 2005 is not currently that's not the current drainage um, plan that they have out there the pond is different they got they got a, a, a different outlet structure the whole deal so what they provided us was a letter saying it was okay and all we're asking is for the actual plans showing what was actually built out there, essentially some as-built plans versus what was approved. There's two different uh, systems. Uh, 
That's, that's, that's an interesting comment because that's not what the condition says. It says the condition says a drainage study will be completed. That is a lot different than a study. is a lot different than saying uh, we need to, you know, have an analysis to verify of what was actually built. And a letter that they're showing or that they have is, is essentially taking the place of the drainage study and, and, and show that, that this current system is in compliance with our standards and all we're asking now is for the site plan. So we probably need to okay. update the condition. Then I, I would update the condition yeah. to that effect. Then. Okay. Did you hear that, Avell? They want, if we were to update the condition to reflect that this is not specifically asked for a study, but rather a verification of the current plans uh, with the current code. Okay, uh, moving on to condition number three. Uh, this, three. Yes, sir. May I read this letter? Uh, has it been submitted as an exhibit? It's already part of your application, correct? Yes. Then, then I think what's going to happen here is they're just, we're simply saying that what you've submitted is just going to be verified to what they have. So I think at this point we can move on with this, and it sounds like that there's confidence on both, uh, on a lot of people here that, that this step will not take a whole lot of time moving forward. I, I think the purpose was, uh, it, it appears to me, I mean, is, is that we're ultimately going to remove the condition that you have to do a new drainage study and that what will result is just a verification from our staff that what you built on that site, you know, is, is, is meeting our current, current drainage requirements. And so I think that that will remove, you know, some of the concern that you might have, but it will still allow our staff to verify that what you have uh, in front of you is, is meeting our code. Okay, this letter says, as constructed, the drainage meets or exceeds the requirements of the approved yeah. drainage plan. As yeah. constructed. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I think that that's all that's requiring is, is that our staff to verify the, the, the information in the study, and that's it. But what, but what we're going to do is remove the requirement for you to do a new study. <laughs> Good. <laughs> remove the requirement for a new study or modify actually the current requirement so instead of a study it's a verification and it's still the to verification of compliance rather than paying for and conducting a new study yeah okay. is that is that okay with everyone involved uh, yes the condition does not state a new drainage study i think the engineering section is happy to comment on yeah, this. Yeah, it does. Yes, uh, Mr. Does Liberty. the drainage study still be comp I'm sorry. We're I'm just sorry. A, it's okay. We're just having to verify. We're just having to verify if the language is correct. Mr. Libri, how would how would you modify this language so we can accommodate to existing study without having to create a brand new study? Uh, essentially, I think they like I said the letter that they provided took the place of the study. Uh, what engineering is looking for, and I think may have got lost. We're looking for the as-built plans because it's t different from what was done or what was submitted back in 2005. It's essentially totally different, and we like to see, we like to have a record of what's existing out there, and it would prevent this confusion in the future, because when we get out there, it's just two different, two different plans. So, Mr. L Mr. LaRue, what I would ask is that uh, part of number two we include, um, as built, existing plans uh, may be sufficient to meet the requirements. Yeah, I have a suggestion for that. Yes. We would just rework it prior to or with any building permits, and as built, plan shall be completed by the applicant and submitted for review and approval by Adams County. Are there any comments from commissions? Yeah, I do have a question. Mr. Hansen. Submitted for review and approval is different than submitted for review. And so my, if, if, whereas my question is, is that were these plans previously approved by the, uh, was the building permit was previously approved, right? They have a building permit for this site. Yes. So why do we, we need to submit their as-built plans for submitted and approval from 2005? Wouldn't it just be submitted for review? Um, no, the conditions on the property are not in accordance <coughs> with the original plans. It was not built to the original approval. And so the engineering section is requesting to review and approve uh, that drainage exhibit um, in order to um, meet the uh, county regulations. I, just, I have a question. What, the letter that you're, excuse me, uh, Vice Chair. <laughs> uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Commissioner okay. Pulowski. The letter that you're referring to, what's the date of that letter? January 10th, 2005. Okay, I just wanted to get that clarification. Thank you. Would what? you like to see it? Pardon? Would you like to see it? No, no, I just, I just, okay. I mean, here. And all the back and forth and being a newbie. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I would like to see it. If you could submit it to the county attorney as an exhibit. I'm, I'm, 
Okay. Commissioner Hansen. Um, if, if I'm hearing two things. I heard uh, from the staff that that it wasn't it wasn't submitted in terms of the as built piece. That's what I heard from the transportation people, and they they need to re to review that because they ha haven't had it. But what I heard other planning staff say is is that is that the site is in is in nonconformance. Yeah. If we haven't reviewed the plan, how the hell do we know if it's a nonconformance? Good question. Mr. Chairman, or excuse me, Commissioner Hanson, that's a question more appropriate for our drainage engineer, but based on conversations I've had with him, that based on um, the approved plans, it's pretty evident, based on the material they've reviewed, that it does not meet the plans that were approved by the county. The exhibit that was just submitted to you is an exhibit from a private engineer and is not from the county. I, I know that. I understood that. They said that. It's from an engineer. And they said that they gave it to us. And my question earlier was, do we have documentation that they gave that study to us? Um, and and um, what they're saying is, is that they're saying yes. And what we're saying is, is that what we didn't, we didn't receive that from them or what they received from them was insufficient. I'm a little, you know, confused as to whether or not it's one of those two things. Um, and, and um, you know, my main goal was basically just to say, look, if they've done a drainage study 10 years ago, I don't want them to have to do another one. Um, because that seems like it was rel relatively recent enough that that was the case. Um, and it sounds to me like we just needed to review it to make sure that everything was kosher, right? We're in agreement, yes. At this time, I'm going to ask that this particular condition remain. I think from what I'm hearing is that you have confidence that, that, that what you've submitted will be sufficient. I'm hearing from staff that they have less confidence that what has been done has been sufficient at this time. In order for us to ensure that there's compliance with the code, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask that the condition remain as it is. My concern also is that, this, that the condition regarding the drainage in the study, which may include the acceptance of any sort of prior uh, plans uh, can be included in the assessment by our engineering. I think what was pointed out uh, upon review by fellow commissioners up here is that this actual report was actually dated and prepared in 1999, not as recent as 2003 or 2004 or 5. So at this time, I think uh, what I would ask is that we keep the condition on and um, allow the staff to work with the uh, applicant or the landlord in this case to see if there is any holes that need to be filled in the c compliance to ensure that we're compliant and that I, I think based on what we're seeing here that this can be done expeditiously am I Qu correct in that question Steve for you yes you Commissioner you Hanson the condition you mean the conditions reads in the packet or the condition that was just uh, uh, outlined by Mr. LaRue the condition that was outlined by Mr. LaRue because it allows the flexibility for them to incorporate the uh, submitted uh, existing plans as part of their assessment rather than having to start over from uh, ground zero. Okay. So we submit, just to clarify, make sure I know what I'm doing. So we are submitting plans of what the drainage is now, currently. That's correct. And if the engineer determines that it's not sufficient to meet the compliance, then you will have, uh, it looks like you may have some additions or modifications to be made on the property. What more can I do than to get certification from a licensed engineer that it meets the county's requirements. And that's what we'll, I think you, you will be able to address that with the staff uh, and the engineer in particular will be able to tell you if there is any changes here. We may be talking this whole time about no changes necessary at all, but I can't answer that and the engineer can't answer that at this time. But what more can I do? Get another engineer's opinion? That is what we're going to rely on staff to determine. I think the issue here is that this study was done, or the analysis was done 16 years ago, and but they yeah. have to be able to verify whether that's compliant with the current code or the compliance with the current standards for drainage. And it was certified in 2005. Understood. And so by working with, with the staff and the engineer, I think they, you will be able to identify with that individual or that department if there's any changes that are necessary. I just know that we can't identify what those specific changes may or may not be right up here. And it may not be much, but I just don't, we can't well, answer that. Right, and that's the purpose it, it, behind the condition is so we allow people, uh, the applicant or yourself, the landlord, to be able to work with staff to accomplish that goal. If it was approved once, is there any doubt that it will be approved again? 
The purpose of the condition is to make sure that there are no changes that are necessary to bring everyone up to the current standards. And if I'm incorrect, I would ask my commissioners or staff to correct me in that. Just, just as a, a comment. Commissioner Hansen. The whole point is, is that the study was done and this engineer said it met the code back in 2005. What our staff is saying is, is that they don't, they haven't had an opportunity to review that and didn't review that in, back in 2005. So I have no doubt that your engineer is correct in saying that that was what was done in 2005. But, but, but what our staff is saying is, is that we never reviewed that to determine whether or not we had the same opinion. Um, and so what this, what the change in the condition would do was not require a new drainage study, which would cost more time and more money. So it removes that requirement, but still allows our staff to review that study from 2005 for, for compliance. So I, I'd say it's an improvement. I, I'd say it's actually a, a pretty good balance between making sure that, you know, public safety and uh, health and welfare is still protected, yet at the same time, you know, doesn't put an undue burden on you. Vice Chair, could I? Commissioner Pulowski. Staff, what period of time do you think this is going to take? I mean, do you see this taking? Um, you know, it's, that's hard to tell. I might defer to Greg Labrie, but if, if it's clear and consistent uh, with additional information that's been submitted, it should be relatively easy. However, if there's revisions or questions, it may take a longer period of time. And because we haven't seen the exhibit, it's hard to comment how long that might take. Because, because my concern is we still have a business trying to get open. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who haven't been involved in private enterprise, <clears throat> it's, really, it's really a tough thing to go through. So anyway, I, I truly identify with the applicant. Okay, let's move on to condition precedent number three. This is, or this is the landscaping requirement. I heard a lot of discussion about uh, condition precedent number three. Um, I believe that the way that this is written uh, allows the flexibility for staff, am I correct, to be able to address the issue. Clearly, the, uh, the commissioners here um, want you to dive into the details, understanding that if the landlord is actually taking care of the triangular portion of the property in the front, and the strip along the side, if you can identify uh, what additional, in that process, you would be able to identify if there was any sort of necessary additional landscaping. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, Commissioner Hansen. I have a suggestion on this, is that I think that there should be a sentence that should be added that, that um, you know, any, any uh, you know, landscaping, you know, currently maintained, you know, by contract, by, by the uh, landlord or, or the applicant, um, should count towards um, any landscaping requirements for this for this site. That's what I would would add. That's a is that a is that a motion to amend that particular? Well, we haven't made a motion yet. Right. Um, but but my my suggestion would be that we would add a second sentence to that effect on that. Do I have any comments or uh, concerns from the other commissioners? At this time, I would agree with that, Commissioner. Uh, Henry and Pulaski, do you have any concerns on that issue? Nope. Okay, let's go to con uh, condition proceeding. Uh, staff, did you get that? That the uh, existing landscaping conducted by the landlord for the benefit of this property can be included in the overall calculation of landscaping requirements as part of this particular uh, the commercial property. We'll let you work on the language on that. Uh, commission condition proceeding at number four. 30 foot right of way. I heard that that's done. So I think we're okay on that condition proceeding at number five. I think that's just with, uh, shall provide a copy of any existing access agreement. Is, do you, is that going to be readily available? I can do that, right. Thank you. I think we've walked through the five conditions proceeding. Um, my question is, is, does the Board of County Commissioners up here believe that we've adequately addressed some of the issues that we think we're causing or contributing to the unnecessarily possible delay, unnecessary delay of the applicant to proceed. Okay, Ms. Evans, do you have any other questions or comments? Um, I do. I'm wondering for drainage, of course. <laughs> um, I am wondering if there are revisions that are needed. Again, this comes down to making revenue and forking out the money to finance this company for the past eight months and longer. 
I cannot guarantee that whatever the revisions are going to be, I can afford it with us not making any revenue. Is it something where if revisions are required and we are being required to update the, land, the drainage that we can do it while we are operating, but before we, be, obviously to condition three, that we will submit anything that is needed for the drainage plan, but if there are revisions needed, that it might be something I can do by a certain time so that I can at least make sure that I have the money to cover a cost like that. I'm going to ask this of staff. Staff, do you have a recommendation on how we can modify this requirement to ensure that the long range compliance with drainage is balanced with the interest of getting the business up and going and started? Uh, yes, the. Um Transportation section engineering um, folks do have the leeway to add a condition to any building permit or change in use permit that would be required for this facility, uh, which could spell out uh, the time frame in which those improvements would have to be made, if any. Um, and I would suggest that if there are actual physical improvements to be made to the site, that that occur within one year of the approval of this board if this board approves this case. Commissioner Henry. Okay, not saying that it wouldn't happen in a year, but what if it doesn't? We've got a business that started up, but they're not conforming to our drainage. There has to be, if we're going to do something like that, there has to be teeth in, in that. And the fact that there would have to be penalties or something that, you know, <clears throat> if that condition isn't met within 12 months and the business is open, they haven't complied to what's needed. So my question to my fellow commissioners or even to staff, what teeth would we have to make sure that that is being followed? Mr. Montoya. Uh, there's actually two options. Um, one is more preferable than the other. Uh, the first option is to um, hold a show cause hearing. Um, the applicant would have the opportunity to explain why they haven't met that requirement within that time frame, and the board may decide what to do at that point. Uh, the second less preferable option would be to ask our county attorney's office to pursue in court um, uh, a judge to compel the applicants to complete um, the requirements as indicated as a condition of the building permit. So how are you recommending that we modify this to allow that flexibility or are you saying to remove it from here, kick the can down the road and put this condition on a future permit application? Um, Based on, on the conversation and what I'm hearing, it sounds like the best option would be um, to condition the building permit in such a manner as to allow the applicant to make any improvements, if necessary, on the property within one year of approval of this board. And if that does not occur, a show cause hearing may be scheduled. I believe you're hearing uh, approval, or I'm seeing nods from the other members of my commission on that. And also, I see a nod from the applicant. Ms. Evans, are you okay with that? Yes, I think that's more than fair. You can see we're trying to help you get to business here. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> All right. To summarize, are there any other issues for Ms. Evans or Mr. Anderson at this time? Board of County Commissioners, do I hear a motion or have any concerns or questions for me? Commissioner Odoricio, um, I don't believe that you asked for public comment. Oh my goodness, thank you very much. Uh, at this time, uh, Ms. Anderson and, uh, Mr. Anderson and Ms. Evans, if you could have a seat. We're going to open this up for public comment. Is there anybody in the public that would like to comment on this particular uh, case? Is there anybody who's signed up? There is not. There's nobody signed up. If anybody, is there anybody in the audience who would like to address this issue or give a comment? Looks like we have somebody coming down now. If you could uh, please state your last name, spell your last name, and your address. So my name is Todd Lehman, L-E-H-M-A-N. My address is 9029 East Mississippi Avenue, Denver, Colorado, 80247. So I am currently um, employed with Clear Intentions. And I'd like to say that, again, this has been an incredibly difficult process for us, one that we kind of did not expect at all. And what brought us to Colorado was actually um, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. We had applied for a grant, and we actually were awarded the grant. And this is back in March of 2014, so it's almost been a year. And this process has kind of put that grant award in jeopardy, and I'd like to kind of 
Colorado really wants us to be here, and I know Adams County really wants us to be here. And to um, the point made before about how many jobs we are creating, we are creating more than three jobs. And we are helping to kind of ameliorate the effects of you know, negative waste management here in Colorado. So our company is really, really working hard to benefit Colorado and Adams County and the residents here. Um, I guess that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lehman. Is there any comments or questions from the, uh, uh, from the commission? No? Is there someone else who would like to speak? My name is Bruce Hammond with Hammond Infrastructure, formerly known as Hammond Contractors, and we are a neighbor in this area. I'm here on other business, but I have to tell you that I'm very impressed by this, these young people, and I'm glad to have uh, been a part of this county most of my life, and I've been in this business in this location for over 25 years. <coughs> so we, uh, we need people like this, and we need businesses like this. I can tell that you're trying, and your tenacity is well commended. I would just uh, suggest, and I know the staff has to deal with regulation and, and the rules, but this effort to try to accommodate people and not just send them back with paper in hand would be uh, well served for the county and for staff. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Ham. Is there anyone else in the audience? Now at this time, any other comments from commissioners? Okay, Ms. Henry. Okay, it looks like we finally have come to the end. So congratulations. It, it, it took an hour and a half. Um, I want to say thank you um, for coming to, to Adams County. I really appreciate it. As soon as your doors open, as you know, I've asked you now, this will be the third time, please give me a tour. Definitely. All right, thank you. Do I hear a motion on this particular case for many of our commissioners? I want to make sure that um, we get everything right here because we went back and forth on a few things. Um, so I'm going to move to approve this case um, with eight findings of fact. I think actually um, we're, we're not talking about removing any conditions precedent. I think we're just talking about some modifications. So it's still five conditions precedent, 13 conditions and one note. But I, I, I believe that condition precedent number one has not changed. Uh, condition precedent number two um, can we re read what we've got on a revised version on the drainage piece? Sure. It should read prior to or with any building permits an as-built drawing for the drainage improvement shall be completed by the applicant and submitted for review and approval by the county. Okay. Um, and then number three, um, which is about landscaping, I think sure. there was a, another part that's added to that. The first part is still staying the same, staying, staying the same. Correct. And then there'd be a new sentence that said the landscaping plan shall take into account the off-site landscaping improvements installed by the owner on the contiguous property. Okay. Um, and then number four, um, that sounds like that's already done, but we're leaving it in. Um, it sounds like it was dedicated in 1971. Um, and then number five, that doesn't sound like that's difficult either. And then those are that, that, I think that's everything that we talked about in terms of changing for those items, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, move for uh, approval with, with those changes as indicated for the record. Second. Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Henry. Yes. Commissioner Pulaski. Yes. Commissioner Odoricio. Yes. Let me make a comment. Commissioner Hansen would like to make a comment. I, I appreciate, appreciate that. I should have done that as I was making the motion. I just want to echo Commissioner Henry's comments, and I hope that this business is open within very short order, and if it's not, I would ask that you personally give me a call. Thank you. Very Thank good. you so much. We look forward much. to the ribbon cutting and seeing how you <laughs> get this thing going. Thank you. Yes, Thank we you. look forward to it as well. I look forward to all of you being there, so thank you so much Absolutely. for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good luck. We'll need a 10-minute break uh, for the next case to get going. Um, I would like to just make a brief comment that as we continue to move forward, Adams County is going through some, uh, we're growing here and we're moving forward and progressing. The idea of that um, in the old days that the only way to be business friendly was to lower your standards. I want to commend staff. I know what they're working on is trying to keep the elevated standards that we and the community expect and we're going to be working with staff. We're also going to be working with staff and others and the business community on trying to make the process a little bit more predictable 
and consistent, and I know that everyone involved is dedicated to that. So I want to thank everyone involved here. We're going to continue to be working on these matters, and uh, your commissioners are always willing to listen to more comments and suggestions, so thank you. We'll take a 10-minute break. Are we ready? Okay, at this time I'm going to call it PLT 2015-00001, Ready Mix Waiver. Hand it off to Mr. LaRue. Thank you. This is the Ready Mixed Waiver. This is a request for a waiver from sections 5401-0202 and 5040102-03 of the Adams County Subdivision Design Standards to allow the applicant to pay for public improvements, curb, gutter, and sidewalk, rather than install them along East 58th Avenue. Here's the site in the surrounding area. So the area for the waiver that we're talking about is here on the property frontage along East 58th Avenue. Here to the east is Franklin. Here to the west is Washington Street. The clear intentions case we just heard is located just right across the way. So again, it's southwest of 58th and Franklin. The surrounding area consists of industrially zoned properties. The future land use map identifies the site and surrounding properties as industrial. And the site's currently comprised of an I-1 zoned parcel and an I-2 zoned parcel. So real quick, Ready Mix Concrete Company is a producer of Ready Mix Concrete and Aggregates, the company's current central concrete Ready Mix batch, batch plant located at 4395 Washington Street in Denver, has been condemned by RTD for the construction of the RTD Fast Tracks North Metro Rail Line, and the applicants not only wish to locate the new batch plant to this subject location, but also the entirety of their management, administration, sales, and dispatch group. There would also be a truck and equipment facility, and a new, new buildings would be added, and approximately 60 employees would report to the location. So the applicant will install improvements to the intersection at 58th and Franklin. They're going to put in a right-hand turn lane on 58th to southbound Franklin. Section 54122 of the Adams County Development Standards and Regulations state that all commercial industrial zone lots must have curb, gutter, sidewalks, and paving, regardless of the size of the lots. Section 54010203 states that all curb, gutter, and sidewalks shall be constructed prior to issuance of a building permit for any residential, commercial, industrial structures. Adams County Transportation Department has determined the installation of that right-hand turn lane will provide significant public safety benefits that would outweigh the immediate need for the sidewalk curb and gutter along 58th. Also, the applicant's proposing uh, cash in lieu for the curb, gutter, and sidewalk along 58th. Uh, 58th Avenue is on the county's five-year plan for capital improvements project, the CIP plan. So the applicants indicated that choosing the option to provide the cash and lieu for curb, gutter, and sidewalk are more efficient use of resources. It allows the county to install the improvements as it sees fits instead of having to potentially remove some of those improvements. And this payment would fund the future installation of those curb, gutter, and walk at the time the CIP is implemented by the county within the next five years. So transportation, the transportation department reviewed the applicant's request and stated that 58th Avenue improvements um, were, are in fact on the five-year CIP. Any improvements to be constructed prior to the county undertaking the plan improvements on 58th Avenue uh, are likely to potentially have to be removed um, as the design of the improvement may not align with what the county is going to put in. Therefore, the Transportation Department is in support of this waiver. Again, here's the site. There's a closer view. And again, we're talking about 58th and uh, Franklin. Here's the site. and We're talking about the property frontage along 58th Avenue. Just the applicant's proposed plat that will be heard in the next case. Site plan, again, up here on 58th Avenue. So these are just pictures of the site. This is south on Franklin. There's looking north. I have pictures over there looking on 58th that I think are probably more important for this case. But this is along the property line on Franklin Street. That's looking west into the site from Franklin, southwest into the site, west into the site. And again, over here is... Um, 58th. Here's the intersection of 58th and Franklin where the turn lane will be improved coming um, from 58th onto southbound Franklin. That's uh, the intersection at 58th and Franklin that's facing east. And then that's looking west along 58th Avenue on the property frontage where they're seeking the waiver. So the provision for the payment of the improvements is documented within the subdivision improvement 
agreement associated with the ReadyMix subdivision case, the applicant and Adams County staff agree that due to the five-year plan improvements to 58th Avenue, it would be preferable to have the applicant pay the fees in lieu of constructing the improvements at this time. Staff's recommending approval of this waiver request with three findings. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from the commissioners? Commissioner Hansen. There's a situation that you know many of us are all familiar with where we had a similar deal where we allowed someone to make payments for you know construction that was done you know by Adams County but then Adams County never signed the subdivision improvement agreement and those payments then were never made and then we had to go back and uh, try to collect those payments later and got some partial payments and then we had to sue that person to get that money and so my question is how do we if we do this how do we ensure that we get the money well I can tell you right now that they've actually already submitted the check for the improvements we're holding well, that's, it pending that's 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 better <laughs> in the last circumstance pending the SIA approval on the next case I, I, I appreciate that I, and how do we calculate what the value of that is and if we're talking about doing this over the five-year CIP then construction prices are really you know <laughs> rapidly accelerating yeah. looks like we can uh, mr. Labrie thank you commissioner uh, essentially we calculated through our current uh, bid schedule items that we have that recently went out for bid so we use historical data or I should say recently historical data and current current uh, cost uh, to date and and we have you know, so, so make it's, the it's based on that the, way. it's based on the value today yeah. which means that if we did it five years from now it's going to cost us more but we're just going to assume that risk yeah, at, at this point, that's how we're approaching it, Commissioner, yes. And the rationale for that would be we would ask them to construct it now, and since we're, and that was what the value of it would be today, and so therefore it's not fair to hold them to a future price if it never gets built, or I mean, what's, what's, your, what's the rationale behind that? Exactly. The rationale essentially is what we, if they ask them to put it in today, that's what it would cost them to do it today. And of course, we're basing upon a five year plan, so we're hoping to do it in the next five, not hoping, but we're planning to do it in the next five years. And it, if, they, if we would force them to put the curb cutter and sidewalk in today, we would be ripping it out. And it just wouldn't, it'd be throwaway and just wouldn't be prudent to do. We'd leave, we don't think it'd be prudent to do at this point. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other commissioners have a question? I guess my question is, why would we have to rip it out at that time? Well, one, it's not very practical to put a curb gutter and sidewalk, even if we pushed it back, the, uh, we're going to be widening 58th Avenue. So, and then, of course, you, if you can see it, we had island, even if we didn't have to push it out, you have curb gutter and sidewalk, and uh, that's going nowhere, which is not very practical, and, and not, uh, it's just an approach that you typically won't do in transportation. There's already curb gutter and sidewalk along Franklin. Yes, and that's the reason why we're not asking them to build it on Franklin. So we're just we're requiring it on 58th where, they're, where, where their property is adjacent to 58th Avenue. We're having the same concern with York area as well? As far as which um, on... Um, we're going to be widening, in, widening yeah, the yes. roads. Yes, we're so. widening York, uh, yes. And, and, and of course, we try to take into account what, as developers come in, Washington Street is a perfect example where we knew that Globeville was coming in. So we weren't, uh, the improvements on Washington Street, we did not put curb gutter and sidewalk because we are expecting the developer to do it as, as they are planning to do now. So we try to put some foresight into these things as we move forward as best we can. So there's times where we won't put it in, we have the developer do it, and there's times where it doesn't make sense for the developer to do it where, when, which we can. And we try to get uh, compensated in the meantime. How do, we, how do we track the money so we know that the $18,000 or whatever that is invested now goes to the correct project in the future? I, I really don't know the answer to that. I, don't, I do know we have, uh, I, I do know, I think we asked to put it in the road and bridge fund and we have a financial person on staff that keeps track of it, but I don't know exactly the methods that they use at this point. The reason I ask is if a citizen were to hear this case and they say, well, obviously we want to, there's an expectation that in the next five years that 58th Avenue will be widened with curb gutter and sidewalk in the meantime we have employees walking along 58th Avenue and citizens and 
uh, I guess part of what my question is is while we would have to to dig it up and, and put it there again, doesn't it still at the meantime create some sort of additional safety that doesn't exist today? Not at this point, not, again, that's what we look at. Not at this point because essentially they're only required to put in curb gutter sidewalk that's adjacent to their property. And if you look at the map there, uh, it would be an island. So you have, again, a sidewalk going nowhere, which doesn't do anyone any good. That makes sense. Do we have any comments? Does the applicant wish to make a statement? Good morning, Commission. My name is Bob Kepford, K-E-P-F-O-R-D, General Manager, Ready Mix Concrete, 4395 Washington Street, Denver. And uh, we th felt that staff did a very nice presentation. We're, we're happy with the content of their presentation. Thank you. Do you have any, uh, any uh, commissioners have any questions or concern for Mr. Uh, Kepford? No? Thank you, Mr. Kepford. Uh, Commissioners, uh, actually at this time I'm going to leave it a uh, question. Is there anybody in the audience or from the public that has signed up to speak on this issue? We do have two people signed up for this. Okay. Um, the first one is Jeff Schwartz. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, if you could please come down and to the podium. Uh, Jeff Schwartz. Uh, outside counsel for Ready Mixed um, uh, address is uh, 1600 Stout Street, Suite 1700, Denver. I'm not sure how I got signed up to speak, so <laughs> I will speak if necessary. Thanks. Thank you. So we have a lawyer who took the podium and decided not to say anything. How do you guys like that? Oh, that's a bonus. Yes. Trust me, I'm an attorney. I get, a, I get it from these guys all the time. Was there, who's the next person on the list? Um, Gary Gentry. Uh, Mr. Gentry. Would you please uh, come on down? Uh, Mr. Gentry, if you could please uh, state your name and your address. I haven't done this since I leave the green. Okay, that's working. Gary Gentry, Ready Mix Concrete Corporation, 4395 Washington Street, Denver, Colorado. And I plead as Jeff did. I don't really know how I got signed up, but willing to speak if necessary. So. <laughs> Are there any other comments from the public? Anyone in the audience? Yes, sir. Mr. Hammond? Is it Ham or Hammond? I'm sorry. Uh, Ham. Ham. You could uh, come on down, state your name. and uh, Bruce Hammond, uh, H-A-M-O-N, 5670 Franklin Street. Uh, we're the right bottom corner there. Uh, business, uh, Hammond Infrastructure. Uh, I have to point out there that we got well over 25% landscape on that picture. So, so Thank you. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that out there right away. We are in the process of uh, doing an extra building on the property. So this was a great contextual uh, lesson this morning. Um, I have a lot of issues with uh, staff's analysis. Quite frankly, if we could go back to the picture that you had in the intersection there, uh, that that'll work for right. That'll work for right now. No, that'll be good for right now. Um, what I also have here, if uh, some pictures that we took, we run a Google map, uh, Earth Pro, in the business that I am in. Let me just explain real quickly for those who don't know. Uh, Hammond Infrastructure is a heavy highway, road, and bridge contractor. We do a lot of the infrastructure in the Denver metro area. I've been in business for over 25 years. An employee. I've been in this site here for over 25 years. I grew up in... Uh, Adams County, went to school in Adams County. I uh, had my kids in Adams County. Uh, now, that company there has probably done over a billion dollars worth of revenue within Adams County. Uh, we've supported uh, our uh, government. We've, before, we've supported the Adams County development. And so I think we're uh, pretty vested, uh, interested party in this area, and, and, uh, and really appreciate the fact we get the opportunity to speak to it today. I just preface to that ReadyMix is a is a reputable company, and I have no I have no grief with ReadyMix. Uh, I don't want to appear to be hypocritical about whether or not we welcome this particular uh, uh, industry or this particular business within the uh, industrial area there. 
the industrial area there that we're all speaking to has um, been ignored, quite frankly, for many, many years. And uh, I would say we're the, well on the lower end of the stepchild uh, relationship with Adams County. We've had really received no improvements to this area in the 25 years I've been there. We're close to Denver, and the other thing I would try to emphasize is that with this advent of this uh, ready mix uh, operation, and by my numbers, there will be an, an, an increased additional 100,000 uh, movements of traffic on that corner as a result of this business. I don't really believe that the uh, infrastructure as, as it is today is, uh, is receptive for that additional traffic, and I don't think it's, uh, I think it is a health and safety issue. I think it is a public safety issue of, of extraordinary circumstance. And uh, the questions, you know, we've, I've had a lot of history in building roads and, and engineering them, and I have engineers that work for me, and, and I've lived here on this corner for, like I said, for over 20 years. So I have a lot of insight and input to what I think perhaps Adams County might want to consider and staff perhaps might want to consider on how to uh, deal with this advent of new business. I'd like to hand this out. Approach the bench or whatever. Your honors. Um, what you see there, and, I, and, and they've shown several pictures of this particular intersection already. And this is a Google Earth uh, Pro system that we have. And I have to tell you that we did not go out and take this picture. This is perchance what Google picked up the day they went out there and looked at it. And there's several things I'd point out with this picture is that the turn slot that, that they're proposing to pay money for, I guess, without putting it in, is uh, coming down that hill and taking a right turn there on Franklin. Uh, there is no room for right turns there. The, that truck will not make that corner. That truck practically runs into those poles every day. And there's uh, the surface areas are being trafficked with uh, uh, vehicles, and also the traffic counts that I've reviewed by the applicant are are they don't they don't spell out the the actual uh, personality of the traffic that themselves are heavy trucks, and there are several axles to each truck, so you you don't have the ability to uh, you don't have the room there now. As you can see, the the pole there on the left side of your of the uh, picture doesn't allow that vehicle to get over far enough to allow the truck to make the left turn. As you look up the road there, you can see another truck coming down the road. And the, and the other handout I'll give you here is uh, kind of an old backup view of this area, uh, which shows you the surrounding businesses. And it's a different view. It uh, has I-25 in the lower portion of the picture there. And, and you see the yellow markings. The yellow mark in the X, the red box with the X, is the applicant's site where he will be looking to place himself. If you can kind of orient yourself there. You can see 5670 Franklin Street. Okay, that's my office building there. And then the red X is where the applicant is proposing. All the yellow you see there are, um, are uh, existing businesses that run trucks and run trucking. And then as you can also see, the highway systems to the east and the west, uh, which that's why this area is so in invitational to that kind of industry. We have an incredible amount of trucking. And then if you can also kind of take notice, as it flows into that intersection, that intersection is taking an incredible amount of truck traffic on a daily basis without any improvements at this point. And then, and, and then on top of that, we add another, at least another 100,000 yards of trucks of movement. This next handout. Is a is a little bit further drawn back in picture. Um, and the reason I brought this one was it's sort of to play to the overall plan 
that perhaps Adams County needs to consider in the future. This one, the reason I brought this one is you can see the 5760 Franklin Street with the yellow markings that I showed you before. Then at, at the diagonal of all the colorful stuff here, this here, uh, I was involved in the uh, North Metro uh, uh, RTD fast track rail through this area. And that is the path and the corridor for the, the North Metro rail. And you can see it's quite close uh, to this area. And then a little bit further down, off of this page, you'll know, you probably know by your own uh, geographical knowledge is that the Western Stock Show complex is nearby. And if you look at this picture up on the, the screen here, across that looks like a little field, a blank field there in the right hand corner. Or no, right there. Could you zoom in, please? Like you had it. I'd appreciate it. There's Franklin Street. You can see our office there with, again, the landscape at the bottom right. Very impressive. And then above, above that is the, uh, is the Western Stock Show parking lot right. for the Western Stock Show. So you add the 100,000 movements plus of the trucks and all the trucks that come in and out of that. Uh, ReadyMix can speak to that. Uh, well, this is by our own research. I don't know what they told you. But again, ready mix isn't the issue here. It's the, it's the infrastructure that's in place and being able to accommodate the additional movement and traffic that's anticipated. You also have to haul in everything that you haul out. In other words, all the rock, the sand and gravel and the large trucks. So we're adding that additional truck and vehicle uh, operations there. The other, the other picture, so this, this corridor for the North Metro, the reason I bring that up is because we're having a lot more activity. You're going to have a lot more investment into the area, as well as I-70, which is in the future being planned for the I-70 corridor, CDOT's doing. So ReadyMix is in a good position to uh, uh, provide ready, we buy a lot of ReadyMix, uh, Hammond Contractors Infrastructure does, and, and like I said, they're a very reputable company. So you have the North Metro line going by, and then you also have another uh, ReadyMix company uh, that's in place at the moment, and if you go to this page here. Hey, hey, Mr. Hammond, I, I, I'm just out of the sake of efficiency and okay. time. Do you have any specific questions? Because Well, I've yeah, I do. I was getting there. Oh, okay. okay. I'm getting there. Uh, you know, I've, like I guess I've been here a long time. I've listened to a lot of people here today about compliance, so I'd really like to make sure this point gets across. The, uh, that, that slope hill going up, uh, what you had a view picture there that showed the going from uh, Franklin Street towards the west, um, which you can also tell by this picture, too. That, that particular infrastructure there is out of compliance. You can't build that road down today. It's at a 9% plus grade. And the, and the reason I wanted to point out to you the, uh, the, um, the best way trucks that do now go up there from the other plant, Redimix plant that's there now, their load ends up coming out of their trucks and you'll have remnants of that on the road at the moment. In fact, it's already set up and it's part of the rubble approach, uh, the feeling of your driving through that area. So my, my point being is, is this applicant's in play, he gets his business up and running, trucks are going up probably by the end of 2016. Um, you've now overlaid an incredible amount of additional lack of safety and, and public safety to this area. Um, you don't have the wits, you have the power lines in the way. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you that you deny this applicant. I think that's your uh, rests with your judgment and your decision. What I would suggest to you that if you're not, if you are going to allow this applicant to move forward, that you make sure that we accommodate the needs of this area. And uh, a turn lane isn't going to cut it. That's uh, that's a project that goes from the top of Hill of Washington Street all the way through to your uh, York area that you're talking about. And it needs to be widened. Utilities need to be put on the ground. That needs to be, that whole intersection needs to be redesigned. And a turn slot is not going to accommodate this particular impact that we're going to receive in this area at this time. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Um, I guess that would be a question is uh, from transportation. Can you uh, provide a little bit more detail on what the five-year plan is for us to address uh, 58th Avenue so we can um, address some of Mr. Hammond's concerns because I can imagine other, other members of the community and including this board have similar concerns about this uh, 
corridor and these yeah. intersections? Well, yes, thank, thank you, Commissioner. For, um, yeah, first and foremost, I guess the uh, applicant provided a traffic impact study for their development and what impacts they would have on our roadway system. And following our standards and guidelines, they have gone above and beyond what, what is required of them for, for, for improvements to that intersection of 58th and Franklin. So just want to make sure that's noted. Uh, as far as the, uh, sorry, I'm not feeling very well today, so. As far as the um, 58th Avenue, it's in our five-year plan to widen it and to, and I don't know the specific details of that. Of course, that would come with additional traffic studies of that area and to incorporate all the concerns that, uh, that this gentleman have. We will look at the, uh, the region or the area as a whole and the traffic study to determine exactly what uh, width and what type of uh, lane requirements we would need for the improvements along 58th Avenue. So that would be part of the design and, and that kind of thing for 58th. And, um, and again, it's gonna be that whole area, as you indicated, as development, development comes into it, we will look at each development and, and, and ensure that they would, I guess, carry their burden of improvements that would be required as they come in. And of course, I think the county is gonna put, do our share uh, to improve that area as best we can with the money and budgets that we have allowed. I uh, hope that answers your questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Um, Commissioner Pulowski. Sorry, the five-year plan that you're talking about goes from where to where on 58th Avenue? If, if, it's in my understanding from, um, from I-25 to, to York Street. We're gonna be looking at that, that, cor that entire corridor. Thank you. Any other questions from the commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Henry. So we already have it budgeted in. It's, it's part of our five-year plan, and as far as uh, budgeting and financing, I, I can't speak to that, Commissioner. Uh, County Manager, could you answer that question? Um, we'll have to check on that. We'll need our staff to check on that one. So if we're not sure if we're actually going to get it done, because if we don't have the money, then it's not going to get done. Is there some, can we call someone in? to the hearing that would be able to answer that? Yeah, let me, let me uh, contact our finance director and see if he can come and give the that would outline be awesome. what's Thank in the you. budget. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. At this time, we're going to proceed on this particular matter when the, uh, we have additional folks come in to be able to fill in the gaps on these facts. Uh, at this time, are there questions on this particular issue, which is the waiver? And if not, do I have, do I have a motion from one of my colleagues? Yes, I would like to uh, move to uh, approve uh, PLT 2015-1, the ready mix waiver. Um, and, and just to make a real quick comment on it, I mean, I do think that there's some serious concerns about infrastructure in this particular area. I mean, I, it hasn't even been mentioned, but I do recall when we had the flood uh, in 2013 that there was significant flooding on Franklin Street and when she was underwater for uh, a long time. and you know, everything kind of runs downhill into this uh, particular vicinity, and I think we've neglected <coughs> this area for a very long time. Um, and I think in the past, in Adams County, we haven't even had, you know, a significant five-year CIP anyway. I mean, the first question I asked to a staff member, one of the first questions in the first year when I was here was, well, what is our CIP? And the answer was, basically, we don't have one. Um, and that's not true anymore. Um, so I would say that we're kind of improving, I guess you could say, over the last few years compared to, uh, you know, four years ago. Um, but I think we need to have a serious discussion as part of that budget process as to what our priorities are, you know, for infrastructure. And, you know, we've got to have, this has got to be addressed. I mean, you look at these roads, you drive these roads on Franklin Street and 58th Avenue, and it's like an old country road almost out there. An old country road that is not being driven in an old country way. Um, so I think there's serious problems, and I'm glad that we're looking at 58th Avenue as far as a specific plan, but we've got we to get this problem, problem fixed. Commissioner Henry? I'll go ahead and, and second, and I'll have a comment also. It, it's not just this area. We're no longer a rural county, which I think that's, for that's right. a very long time people thought we were, or, you know, up until two years ago, I would say that the thought was we're a rural county. We're now an urban county. And because of that thought back then, we are very behind in our infrastructure throughout the county. 
I would say 25 if not 30 years behind in our infrastructure um, throughout the county because of the mindset of previous Oh, how should I say it politically correct? I'm, ne I'm never good at, yeah, I always say governing bodies <laughs> or previous commissioners. Um, sometimes being political correct never gets the point across. Um, so unfortunately, it, it affects our, our businesses and it affects attracting businesses to Adams County because of the infrastructure that we have in place currently. So I, you know, it is definitely a conversation. I'm hoping that we start putting more of a priority on our infrastructure um, here in the county. So I, I believe that we have a vote. We have a motion. We have a motion and a second. I, I understand. So we're ready to go. Oh, okay. Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Henry. Yes. Commissioner Pulowski. Yes. Commissioner Odoricio. Yes. This time, are we ready to go into the next step? Just for sake of clarity, uh, this particular overall ready mix uh, applicant today has two steps, or it's really three, but one was the waiver. Second was that now we're going to discuss the subdivision and the subdivision improvement agreement. And uh, I think I believe the rezoning is included in the next step, too. Is that correct? Are you combining the next two steps or all the steps in this next presentation, or is there another one after this? We'll tie it all together with this one. All right, so this is the final one. That's correct. Thank you. Feel free to proceed. Thank you. It's the Ready Mix Subdivision Case PRC 2014-12. This is a request for a minor subdivision final plat to create one lot from two parcels and then a rezoning a portion of the new lot from I-1 to I-2. So again, here's the site. It's south of 58th Avenue between Franklin and Washington. It's the two parcels that are highlighted in the light blue. Here's a quick summary of some previous requests. The site had a previous permit approved for a wood mulching operation. That permit since expired and the operation is no longer on the property. More recently, case VSP 2014-54, the ready mixed uh, variance was approved by the Board of Adjustment on December 18th last year. That approval granted a variance of 10 feet for maximum height of 85 feet uh, for a structure in the I-2 zone. And then we just heard the ready mixed waiver that was heard um, recently. And then the request is uh, for a waiver from, and that one was for the waiver from the curb gutter and sidewalk requirement. So again, it's, it's uh, located southwest of 58th and Franklin, surrounding areas industrial in nature. Future land use map identifies the site and surrounding areas industrial. Site's currently comprised of one I-1 zone parcel, that's the western lot, and then the I-2 parcel on the east. And again, Ready Mixed is a producer of Ready Mixed concrete um, and aggregates. They have uh, six concrete batch plants in the Denver area. They had annual sales of over 70 million. Company's current Central Concrete Ready Mix backed plant located on Washington Street in Denver has been condemned by RTD for the light rail. So they want to locate the batch plant as well as their management, administration, sales, and dispatch group, and their truck maintenance and equipment building, and build new uh, buildings to the site as well. And they'd move approximately 60 employees there. Total cost of the project, including the real estate, is uh, estimated around $10 million. All the proposed uses on the properties would be allowed for the I-2 zoning. The newly proposed lot will conform to all the minimum lot requirements, lot size requirements of the I-2 zone. Minimum lot standards for the district are two acres and at least 125 feet of lot width. The site will be 10 plus acres. Franklin Street frontage would measure approximately 375 feet. And the 58th Avenue frontage would measure approximately 476. Per section 525 of the Adams County Subdivision Regulations, the applicant shall be required to complete a subdivision improvement agreement or SIA along with the final plat. And the applicant has submitted this agreement. It's in final form, and it's under for con or it's here for consideration today as well. The agreement addresses the manner and timing of the completion of all subdivision improvements and the responsibility for payment of the cost of those improvements. Included are improvements to the intersection at 58th and Franklin. That's the right-hand turn lane on 58th to southbound Franklin. The SIA also includes, now it's not potential, but includes cash in lieu for curb gutter and sidewalks along 58th. Drainage plans for the project have been completed. Um, I should say they have been completed. The street construction plans have not yet been approved, but approval of both of those plans would be included in the SIA. Referral comments concerning this proposal are, are included as conditions. Several, several unfavorable comments from the surrounding property owners have been received. They're similar to the testimony received in the last case, but conditions included water, uh, sewer, traffic, road conditions, drainage, air quality, et cetera. Water and sewer would be provided by the North Washington Water and Sanitation District. And again, 58th Avenue is on the county's five-year plan for improvements. And the turn lane and construction of curb, gutter, and walk will provide great benefits to the area. All air quality requirements would have to conform. The applicant has applied to the state for their APEN or their air pollution emission notice permit. And that permit requires fugitive dust control. 
Drainage plan and street construction approval shall be approved prior to any construction activities. An updated traffic impact study, as Mr. Labrie, Mr. Labrie testified on the last case, has been submitted by the applicant, reviewed by transportation with no concerns noted. The Planning Commission considered this case on January 22nd. They recommended unanimous approval. No citizen testimony was presented during that hearing. The applicant did not express any concerns with the staff report or the conditions. It should be noted the Planning Commission had recommended approval with one condition precedent regarding submittal of the final SIA, but that document has been submitted, so that condition has been deleted by the staff. It's not reflected on the staff report. Here's the aerials. Again, uh, this picture shows I-25, Washington, 58th, Franklin, and all the way over to York. Here are the sites in the light blue. These are just progressively closer images. And again, this is the proposed plat that shows the right of way and then combining the two lots into one. It's a proposed site plan that the applicant has shown us that shows the existing buildings, future batch plant location and storage areas, et cetera. And this is looking along the property frontage on Franklin, looking at some of the existing landscaping they have in there. That's looking north on Franklin, back at the intersection at 58th. This is the site over here where the, behind the truck. That's east across Franklin, looking at that vacant field. Again, south along the property line. That's west into the site, and that just gives you an idea of what the buildings look like on site. All of this will be improved. These are the same pictures from the last case. It's the intersection of 58th and Franklin, 58th and Franklin facing east, and that's west along 58th. So staff finds the applicant has presented a proposal consistent with the development standards and regulations. The proposed lot exceeds the minimum requirements for the I-2 zone. It's consistent with the level of intensity of development in the surrounding area, and Planning Commission and staff are recommending approval. That's based on 14 findings, three conditions, and two notes. That concludes the staff report. Yes. Uh, do we also have a member of staff to answer a question from the previous case regarding the funding? for uh, development and improvements along 58th? Uh, yes, we have uh, Ben Dahlman, finance director, to briefly talk about uh, our funding. Mr. Dahlman, if you could come down and state your name. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, and and <laughs> just with uh, permission, may I ask the exact question so I know what to answer? And, and I'm sorry, um, Mr. Vice Chair, if I could just for the record, I think that it would be prudent for us to incorporate all of the testimony and questions and comments from the previous case into this case as well um, so that for the record they will all be considered um, one case so that we don't have to repeat. I think uh, that's testimony. a great idea. Uh, do we need an, is there an actual motion and a vote that has to do, be done or do we just do it on the record at this point? If, if there's no objections from the commissioners I think we'll just planning department and my office will consider this to be um, one case for the purposes of the record to the extent that there's any appeals or anything we will combine the records from both cases. Got it. So any testimony or discussions that were part of PLT 20,015-00001 for regarding the ready mixed waiver will be incorporated uh, into PRC 2014-00012. Thank you. Mr. Dahlman, if you, uh, your question is, is what's the question? <laughs> so as to most accurately answer to the best of my ability. And, and I think my colleagues and staff uh, can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the question is regarding the developments and the improvements along 58th Avenue. It's our understanding that it's part of the five-year plan, and the question that was asked is, is there funding allocated, set aside, or planned for that particular project uh, along 58th, improvement along 58th? Sure. Um, my, my, my response to that question would be as follows. Um, for each year we budget uh, and, and the commissioners appropriate through a formal process um, dollars assigned to specific projects. For CIP planning, for example, uh, lists of projects that are potentially uh, funded in future years are, are, set, are, are documented but not necessarily appropriated. Um, and that happens in each subsequent year. So the way I would say how CIPs work is CIP is a plan to do certain things contemplated at certain times, but those, those CIP projects could be moved forward or um, moved along um, 
when when it's appropriate to do those projects. So in engineering projects and road projects, for example, there's usually design work that's required before there is construction. So different components will show up on SEIP at different times. The direct answer here is that there's not currently dollars appropriated for this project, but they may be planned for on a future project list called the CIP, and they would need to be appropriated in a future budget year. Commissioner Henry. So basically you're saying you don't know when, and at this current time, we don't have funding for 58th Avenue um, appropriated or in the budget or anywhere around. Yeah. Uh, I, let me let me touch on this. So, I think the clarity is in 2015, the funding appropriation does not include a major rework of 58th Avenue. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not included on their CIP plan in the out years. It's just not the appropriation <laughs> isn't included. Um, but it will be a discussion. Um, specifically off of this conversation um, <laughs> as part of the overall CIP plan for 2016 going forward. Great, thank you. Commissioner Hansen. This has been my concern for a while. I knew that was going to be your answer, Ben, because we can only do annual appropriations. But I've asked the question in the past about approving a five-year CIP, and the answer I got was, well, you all approve that with the budget, which actually isn't accurate. Uh, we do not approve a CIP with the budget, nor do I believe that the commissioners and the board has ever approved a CIP. Sure. And nor have I even seen one. And so I, I, I have serious concerns about, about that um, because we do not approve, as you pointed out, uh, through the budget the appropriation for a five-year CIP, nor can we by law do that because you have to do an annual appropriation. Sure. Um, and so you know, we've got to figure out a better way to do this. And I, that's not a question for you, Ben, because you're the finance guy. You're just going to tell us how much money is there and, and whether or not we can spend it. Sure. Did you have anything else? Um, Commissioner Henry. Actually, yeah, my comment is the fact that it would be great to have a study session on our five-year capital improvement plan. You know, it would be really nice to know what road projects are actually on that five-year capital improvement plan mm -hmm. and when we plan to bring that forward. So okay. thank you, yep. Ben. Sorry yep. to kind of throw you under the bus. Hey, Literally. Um, yeah. Transportation, bus, same thing. And so... Uh, yeah, I understand. <laughs> Mr. Leopold, can we add that to this short but growing list of items to include on our study sessions in the future? And particularly, I think all these study sessions we would like to see earlier rather than later so we don't keep kicking the can down the road. Because I think Mr. Hammond brings up a good point that he feels, as many places in Adams County do, that they've been left behind. And what we want to see is that this isn't just something like, yes, someday I want to go visit Europe. And we keep kicking that. Uh, keeping that on our to-do list, but in five years from now, if uh, we have employees for Ready Mix or Mr. Hammond's business coming, walking down 58th Avenue that are still in danger uh, because we don't have curbs, gutters, and sidewalks, we're going to owe them uh, an explanation. Uh, and we'll, we'll set up a study session. We do have a CIP plan. Uh, we really... I think we've moved in, in progress in that order. It's really about the process, and I think the clarity for the new commissioners will be important too. So uh, I'll do that in the next couple of weeks. Thank you very Thank you. much. Um, at this time, uh, would the applicant like to take the podium? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Addressing the commission again, Bob Kepford, K E P F O R D, General Manager, Ready Mix Concrete. Uh, and appreciate the presentation by uh, planning and transportation. Uh, we felt that they've, they've, they've done a great job on this. Uh, I'd only wanted one comment. The uh, work contemplated in the SIA for the intersection improvements, uh, we have provided a 120% uh, funding letter of credit to the county to cover the obligation of that work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any other comments from the applicant? If not, I'm going to open this up to public testimony. Uh, is there anyone signed up for your public testimony? There is not. There is not? Uh, Mr. Hammond, would you like to make a statement? Oh. Yeah, I, I won't rehash since we're all combining this. I appreciate that. Uh, I just want to make one last clarification, and that is uh, I'm not obstructing the ready mix uh, process. However, uh, if you do allow this move forward, I implore you to. Uh, 
move forward with your obligations to that infrastructure improvement. If they're in there by 2016 operating at full bore with all the projects that we're foreseeing in that area, that would mean that you'd be behind the curve already at the end of 2016. Mm -hmm. That intersection in the public health and safety cannot bear that additional traffic in to end of 2016. So in your capital improvements discussions, you ought to probably plan for that at the end of 2016 if you're going to go ahead and allow this to move forward for, and, 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 and impact that area further. I'm sure there are other areas that need your money, but if you're going to make the decisions that you're making to impact these areas knowing that the existing condition is what it is, then I think there is a responsibility to move forward with those improvements to allow this additional uh, businesses that you're allowing in there. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Hammond. And I think that I speak enough for the, the group that we appreciate the comments on that. Um, the comments you bring up are indeed policy uh, issues related to the big picture and I think we're going to, it's clear that we're wanting to move forward on addressing those issues quickly. Um, so thank you for your comments. Are there any other comments from the audience, from the public? Now at this time I then would ask if uh, my commissioners would like to address this issue if they have any questions or comments or motions. Do we want to do um, both of them at the same time? So you've got the uh, subdivision improvement agreement and the, red and the, um, uh, the subdivision. Um, so I will combine PRC 2014-12. Actually, they're both listed as dash 12, but is that, is that correct on the, uh, they're both 12? Okay, so it really is already combined on the same on the same thing, um, and uh, move those approval. What are the other? And that's it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Larue, if you could uh, clarify, what we've got uh, is 14 findings, three conditions, and two notes. Right. Are there any? Are there separate um, resolutions or, or I mean, movements, motions that we have to make on this, or would it be a single motion for? approval of PRC 2014-12 with those 14 findings, three conditions, and two notes. That's correct. The way Mr. or Commissioner Hansen stated it would cover both. Then it covers the rezone, the subdivision, and the yeah. agreement. Right. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Pulowski? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. I just want to make a statement of that. We're looking... As you, as you hear about the improvements that everyone wants to see on 58th, we're going to look at ready mixes kind of help be an anchor in providing those improvements along that corridor. So the examples and, and, and the level of, 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 of what, you, what you build there will really help us throughout that entire corridor, and we look forward to working with you on that. So thank you, and good luck with your business. Moving along, are there any other items for us to address today? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? No? Then I think we're done. Thank you very much.